Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Had a super start to the new week with a puzzle by the Sudoku professor himself, Mr. Richard Stolk. This is number 307, would you believe, in his Sudoku variant series, which he's been publishing on Logic Masters Germany for over five years. It is extraordinary. Um, this one is called Snake Sum Sudoku, which is intriguing, actually, because I have seen Snake Sum logic puzzles before, but I don't think I've ever seen one that's been sort of uh, mashed up with Sudoku logic. So it ought to be a lot of fun. It's got a, an anaconda-sized rating on Logic Masters Germany. Um, so, yeah, we should be in for a treat. Um, now, couple of things to mention before I read you the rules of this one. Yesterday we released all sorts of stuff over on Patreon, um, including this new Sudoku challenge by Scott Strosal, which came, came out at four o'clock yesterday afternoon, so just over 24 hours ago. Um, I know many of you have looked at it already. We've already had, would you believe, 20 correct solutions um, in, and they're all raving about how good these puzzles are. They are beautiful and difficult Sudoku puzzles. Um, so give yourself a treat and take a peek at them. They, uh, You won't regret it. Um, now, with us having... 20 correct solutions you'll realize of course that somebody has won the prize for the first correct solution and that person is Elias Karamalagos so very well done Elias that is brilliant solving uh, I think he came in seven minutes ahead of the next best um, and we've offered him the chance as a result to test our brand new Sudoku hunt and he has accepted the challenge so um, I hope he's going to enjoy that he's going to get a sneak preview um, and we're hoping to launch that puzzle hunt um, at the start of March to all of you who are patrons of the channel. So look out for that. I can tell you it's going to be, you're, you're going to enjoy it. Um, also on Patreon yesterday, we released this bonus video of Tan Tan Dai, um, this astonishing solver from China, um, solving a Sudoku variant actually by Glum Hippo, who I know many of you will be familiar with. Um, now, you know, do have a look at the, uh, we've been absolutely delighted, actually, I just want to say this, we've been delighted by all of the comments that the video we put up of Tan Tan solving on the main channel yesterday, that the comments on that video have been absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you so much to any of you who've actually contributed um, to the comments there, because, you know, that they, they, they're basically reaffirming what we knew which is that we were watching some sort of magic when you watch um, this lady solve it is quite astonishing it really is astonishing and in this day and age i think we all like to be astonished by things every now and again especially in a positive way and yeah give yourself a treat if you've not watched it i'll try and remember to put a card on the screen but watch tan tan die solving sudoku and be <sighs> well, blown away. Um, now, what are the rules of Richard's puzzle? Let me read them to you. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Good. Uh, draw a snake in the grid that starts and ends in the cells with the circles. Okay, I can see those. The snake wriggles horizontally and vertically and never touches itself, not even diagonally. Don't let your snake touch itself, even diagonally. Um, clues outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits that are part of the snake in the respective row or column. Clues outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits that are part of the snake. Right, so we've got to draw a snake. It's going to wiggle around the grid somehow. Uh, that would be a valid snake. Look, that snake is not touching itself diagonally or orthogonally. And then we have to go along. Let's put the snake in like that. Well, we can see this snake doesn't work for a start, but let's imagine, let's ignore the fact it doesn't work. What we'd be saying is that these three cells in the snake in row seven have to add up to 41. These three would have to add up to five. I know it's not good. I know it's wrong. Okay, I was unlikely to guess the correct snake just by uh, scribbling the snake in. This, these uh, five cells in column six would have to add up to 38, etc. So we need to build a snake like this. Now, what we mustn't do in building a snake is do something like, uh, let's see if we can get this snake to cl clip it. Well, it, obviously, if the snake was here and then turned left, it's touching itself orthogonally. Um, 
It's going to be hard to make it touch itself diagonally. Actually, let's move it down a bit. That will help me. There we go. Now, in fact, that's still no good. Let's do one more because let's imagine it's we're here and we come to here and then we we turned back this way and then continued round to the end. This snake is touching itself diagonally and that is also not allowed in this puzzle. So don't do that either. Um, we've got to have a pure snake. Um, so do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I can see two things that are of uh, three things that are of interest. The OK, this is where my eyes are drawn. And then laterally that one as well, because that is a lot of real estate that has to be snake in these two rows and columns. Now, how do I know it's a lot of real estate that has to be snake? It's because I know a secret. What do those cells add up to? Well, that's a complete column of the Sudoku. So it will contain all of the digits one to nine in the correct solution to the puzzle. Now, if we add up the digits one to nine, we get 45. So I know these yellow cells sum to 45, but the snake cells sum to 42. So almost this entire column has got to be snake. Um, and in fact, the maximum number of cells that are not snake in the column is two, isn't it? Because 45 minus 42 is three. I can make cells sum to three. I can make two cells sum to three with a one or a two. So either this, um, this column is sort of like this with a three missing somewhere, or it's, I don't know, something like that with a one and a two missing. So we don't know which of those it is, and we don't know how the snake's disposed, but we do know there's a maximum of two gaps in the snake in this column. Now, the same logic obviously applies uh, absolutely in the 41 row. 40, 45 minus 41 is four, so the maximum number of cells missing from the snake is the most number of cells we can make add up to four, which would be two. If we use two cells to make one and three, put one and three in those cells, we could have we could have two snake cells missing. Yeah, OK. But then think about this column as well, because this this column, in fact, I'm actually wondering, I'm hoping that Mark has put this into the puzzle, into the software correctly, because this is a bit surprising to me. 38 next to a 42 because 45 minus 38 is seven. So the maximum number of cells that are missing from the snake in this column is the maximum number of cells we can use to make seven, which is three with a one, two and a four. So there are at most three cells missing from this column and at most two cells missing from this column. So let's just try wiggling the snake down. Oh no, okay, that's fine, isn't it? That's fine. That's got two missing in column six and two missing in column seven. So you can actually do this. In fact, this is probably correct because it it does allow it does allow us to meet our friend here like that. So, by the way, when you do snake puzzles. Um, this is very much, I think, a legitimate method of doing them is to sort of play around with the, the way the snake might be able to move and then iterate towards a correct snake, if you see what I mean. Um, oh, this doesn't work, actually. This doesn't work. This works fine for column six and column seven, but it doesn't work here, look. Why doesn't it work here? Well, let's look. Um, we'd have to have a green cell here. This is not snake, because otherwise the snake's touching itself. This would have to be green. Now in the 41 row, we know there's only two gaps in the snake. So the rest of this row now has to be snake. 
but the head or the tail is most certainly also snake and now we have a problem because this snake is branching it's either coming down and turning left in which case this cell is definitely touching the snake orthogonally or it's doing that in which case this cell is definitely touching the snake orthogonally so this is wrong this is absolutely wrong so but it can't be that wrong because we, we we must wiggle down here if we don't wiggle you know if if we try something silly um like you know putting seven cells in a row down this column you can see immediately all of these cells would be orthogonally touching the snake so they would have to be green and now there are five empty cells in column six when there can only be three so we have to wiggle i can't remember which way i just wiggled at the start did i wiggle that way or the other way oh no this is worse actually this is this is worse than what i did before ah yeah okay if you do this if you go left and wiggle downwards like this yeah, you can see because the snake now has to close like this, this cell never gets taken, this cell never gets taken, and now the snake is utterly broken because I've got my two gaps in row seven already. All of those would have to be snake and the snake has branched. So we must wiggle the other way, I think. Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Go away. Right, I want you to, I want to wiggle in this direction. And I've got to wiggle in such a way that I really pack stuff in. So this, this was what I did that was wrong, I think. I've really got to pack stuff into row seven in a way that doesn't, but I must have a gap here. So I've got to come down. I must have one gap here. I can have no more than one gap in the row. But I can't have I can't have all of these three squares being snake because that's going to cause the snake to branch. So there must be a gap in one of these squares, which means those two squares are definitely snake, these two here. And that means I've got to I've got to muck about with this bit somehow so that it doesn't do this. I said, I said, ah, I see. I've got a degree of freedom in the um, in the six, in the thirty-eight column. I've got one one degree of freedom in the sense that I can. i at the moment. I've only got two gaps in this column. I can have one more gap, and I've got to use that gap. I've got to use that gap. This is definitely in, isn't it? So take those out oh no I see what we do it's easy okay we do that do we and then come in there and that's that yes so all I have to all you have to do is introduce an extra gap into column six which we're allowed because we can make three cells add up to seven we've packed in perfectly column seven there and now I've got one gap here, one gap here, because the snake can't touch itself. And now this can do this. And there we go. So that, well, I hope you agree that was, that was logical. I mean, I don't know how you would do that without sort of tracing it in and trying to wiggle your snake. <laughs> pack your snake into a per, you know a certain area and then allow the snake to expand in other areas without you know I don't I don't quite know it would certainly take a long time anyway I think to prove this highly rigorously I'm just wondering whether there's a way of doing that um, The way I think you'd have to do it absolutely rigorously is a bit like what I did there. You'd have to look at these three squares, say these three squares must have at least one gap in the snake in them, because otherwise the head is branching. 
you'd have to look at those that string of cells probably as well and say does there have to be a gap there I think there does yeah because otherwise you get these two squares would not be snake the whole of the rest of the column would have to be snake and that will break the 38 column which, which would allow you to say things like that cell and that cell have to be snake yeah so I think it would I think it would actually be quite difficult to do that though to actually sort of go cell by cell and prove that this is the only arrangement it's one of those things that I think a human being can sort of see a little bit easier than a computer might be able to see even although the computer could do the calculations much more quickly so perhaps not but anyway I, I think that this is um, the only way we can pack the snake into and meet the 41 the 38 and the 42 criteria um, and if you don't believe me try and do it another way and I think you'll find it's not possible um, but actually what I'll do if somebody puts in the comments if somebody puts a really elegant way of demonstrating that this is correct or incorrect um, I will read it out tomorrow there you go so there we are there's a there's a challenge now let us proceed on the basis this is correct because I think it is and try and work out what cells can't now be snake so all of these can't be snake these can't be snake oh hang on be a bit careful at the top that's got to come out again otherwise and it can't take this square or it'll touch this cell orthogonally so all of those come out all of these come out or they touch the snake would touch itself orthogonally so now that's got to go over there 13 in row 1 can't be more than 4 snake cells because if we added another snake cell here that would be um, the minimum we could make these add up to would be 15 with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 so that's green the snake turns down the snake can never get into this domino at the top now because it can't get out again without touching itself so those turn green oh okay so the 22 clue needs to be at least three cells which means it could be four cells but it's at least three so if this was green now it can't now this in order to make this purple it would have to be a third head or tail which is impossible so in fact we can say with certainty this is definitely purple we don't know about this one yet we therefore know that's green we therefore know these two are green the same logic we did in the top left hand corner uh, now what do we do we can don't actually know maybe we maybe we have to do a bit of sudoku now I can't see how to close the snake with you know knowing with certainty so I think we, we do have to now turn our attention to Sudoku so how do we do that ah okay yeah 42 we know the two gaps must add up to three so they are one and two the 38 has three gaps in it they must be one two and four The five here, these two snake sections must be one, two, three, or four. They're either two and three or one and four, which gives us a quadruple in row eight. The 41 has two gaps, which must add up to four. So they are one and three. The 30, there's exactly four cells in that row that add to 30. So they've got to be six, seven, eight, and nine. The seven. Oh, that's an eight. <laughs> there's just one. There's only one snake section in column eight. That is a seven. Sorry, I should have got that immediately. Um, okay. So now, what do we do? Uh, I don't know 
Is there something obvious we're meant to do here? We can twenty two. Sorry, I'm just trying to spot if there's a really easy victory to be had here, and I'm not seeing anything. Maybe I've got to do more abundant pencil marking. So in row eight, five, six, seven, eight, and nine have to be going into these cells. 20 down here, seven, 42, 38, 17, 13 could just well we know we know the snake has to connect here so it's 13 is going to be at least three cells 15 is going to be at least two cells um ah bobbins i don't know what to do here oh that's really clever that is really clever. This square can't be in. Why not? Well, if that's in, the snake has to turn. And you can see it can't hit itself orthogonally now. So it would close. And now we've got a 15 clue here. And we've got five cells, which would have to add up to 15. So we'd have to use one, two, three, four, and five in these purple cells. And that would mean this cell would have no value. That is really beautiful. And not, sorry, I was a bit slow spotting that. So this square is not snake, and therefore the snake turns that way. That's gonna do something to this clue, I can see. Now, ah, lovely. Now this cell is impossible, because if the snake comes to there, now look at row three, we've got six purple cells adding to 20, which is impossible. The minimum you can make six cells add up to is 21. Always good to know your triangular numbers when you're doing Sudoku. So this must do this one, which means that cell's green. And we've just got to close the snake now. And uh, I'm not sure we I'm not sure I know which way that goes. I probably do if I think about it hard enough, but I don't see how to do it. And I'm tempted by this 22 clue now. Because the 22 clue, well, it has to contain a 9. So that's not a 9 down there. But actually, I think this 13 clue is now interesting as well. Because this square cannot be a 9, because then those three squares would have to add up to 4, which is impossible. And it can't, uh, this can't be an 8 either. So if you think about the options to make 22 in 3 cells, we've got 9, 8, 5, or 9, 7, 6. Well, this can't be 9 or 8, so this is 5, 6, or 7. Uh, 6 or 7. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, this is lovely. Okay, so whatever this is, there must be a 1 in one of these three squares. If this is 5, these have to add to 8, which is either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. If it's 6, you have to make them add up to 7. That needs a 1. 7 needs 1, 2 and 3. Well, we can't put the 1 in those two columns. There's already 1s in them, so that's a 1. This, in fact, has either therefore got to be 3 or 5. And this has got to be... This can't be less than three. So the minimum value I can make these three squares add up to is eight. If I make this three and this that four, that's the that's the best, that's the lowest I'll do. So that's eight, which means this has to be five. It's the only thing that will work. Five, three, three, four. which means this is an eight, nine pair because we know we're looking at five, eight, nine to make 22. The 12 clue now works. This can't be an eight anymore because it would put a four here. So that's a nine. This is an eight. This is a three. That's not a one. Um, Uh, 
I wonder if that's how I meant to disambiguate this clue, you know, because making these squares add up to 12 now, is that going to be difficult? The minimum this cell could be, oh no, this cell could still be, no, the minimum this cell could be would be 5. The minimum this cell could be would be 5. So the minimum these two can be together is 11. Yeah, that, that, that does it. The, because the minimum each of these individually can be is 5, the best I'll do for this is a 5-6 pair, plus the 8. In fact, this is not only going to disambiguate whether this square is in, I think it just disambiguates the value of all of these squares. Because I've got 19 minimum in those four, and I have to get 20 altogether. So this, this can't be a zero. That's got to be a one. This has got to be green. This has got to be purple. We now know what our snake looks like. This is a five, six pair. The five up here tells us the order, six, five. These are two, four, and seven. That's not eight anymore. This does add to 20, good. Oh, now I've got four cells in the 13 column. This is so clever, isn't it? The way it keeps, you keep, as, as things change, the different clues suddenly emerge as the kingpin. So this square can't be nine or eight anymore. So if it's seven, I've got two, three into those. That would be a two. And that would be a three. If it's six, we'd have to have two, uh, two and four. Oh, I'm not sure that is the the key element then. Fifteen clue in two cells. That's got to be uh, either six, nine, or seven, eight. Now, this can't be a one. Uh, <laughs> where do we look now? If that can't be a one, that can't be a four. That does give me a one, two, three, triple there. This column, um, we've got a one, two, three, four, five quintuple in it. So these squares have got to be Six, seven, eight, and nine. That can't be seven. Uh, okay. Okay, so now I'm probably missing something crucial. What am I missing? Which one of these clues is now weak? Or is it something else I need to look at? There's a one over there. There, Maybe it's Sudoku. There's no five in that square. Fifteen. Is it this fifteen clue? The only reason I'm wondering about this fifteen clue is this square is interesting now. Because that has to be at least a 5. So once, so this square can no longer be 9 or 8. Because if it's either of those, we'd reach 13 in two cells. And these two would be too small. In fact, oh no, 7 is okay. Just. 7, 5, 2, 1 would work. Oh no, it wouldn't. That would break that square. Good. Oh, come on. Is that right? Yes, it is. If this is seven, you have to put five here. Because if you put seven here, you've obviously broken the 15 total far too quickly. So if you go seven, five, this has to be a one, two pair. And that has no value. This is a six. That's a nine because that's in the 15 clue. Now, I can't put 1 and 2 in here, so the minimum I can put is 1 and 3, which means this these have a minimum value of 10, which means this must actually be 5. And the fact that these are a 1, 3 pair means that with the 1, we get the 1, we get the 3, we get the 2, we get the 1, we get the 3, we get the 2, we get the 4, we get the 2, and we get the 1. 
and we get a one in one of those squares. Ah, no, we don't. We don't, because where does the three go in that box? The three has to go there. And once the three goes there, that's a one, that's a one, and it's all kicking off. This three forces the one here. <laughs> um, one by Sudoku's got to go there. Three's in one of the, those two cells. This four means that's not that's not a four. In fact, look, there's a th two looking at that one, so we can do that one. That fixes the three. We seem to have a lot of threes and a lot of ones. How many one? I've got all the ones. Threes, not quite. But I can get more. Look, that's a three by Sudoku. And that's a three by Sudoku. And now I've got all the threes. Okay, so let's let's take stock and work out where we are. Right, one thing I can see is now I've got four here, which means these two have to sum to nine. The only way that seems to work is with a seven and a two. Yeah, I can see that's a six. That would have helped if I'd looked at that square. You're right. Um, Oh, look, the 27 clue has now got a 3 in it there. So these, whoops, so these three squares have to add to 24. There's only one way that will work, but that's with 7s, 8s, and 9s. Get rid of 7 from this one. That's an 8, 9 pair. These are 7s, 8s, and 9s as well. That's not 9. Ah, okay failing slightly to channel my inner Tantan die at the moment and get this done with any super efficiency. Um, okay, so I've, but I have nearly done all the snake parts. In fact, look, I've got 22 here and those add up to 18, so that's a four by Sudoku. Thirty-three. Oh, look, there's a 33 clue here, but it can't have a 3 in it. So there's only one way of getting to 33 if you can't put 3 in it. It's got to be 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. So there's no 6 in it. So this is the 7, 8, 9. These two have got to be 4, 5. And we, oh, in fact, by Sudoku, we have 4 here, which would also have given me that a bit more quickly. 4 appears here. This is not nine. Oh, look, I can get rid of nine from all of those cells. So there's only one place now that nine can go in this row because this one can't be nine either. So that's a nine, that's an eight, that's a nine. So eight comes out of all of those cells. Seven comes out of this one. Six, nine, seven go in. Eight, seven go in. Nine, eight go in. This is a six. By Sudoku, that's a five. And this square is also revealed. That's an eight. And that's, I think that's the snake done. So all of these outside clues are now completely superfluous or otios. Um... Okay, so this is a two six pair to complete row nine. There's a two there, so that's a two, that's a six. That's a six, therefore. Get rid of the sixes from there. This can't be a seven. Ah, seven. That can't be an eight. Those two squares are known to be four and seven, and there's a seven here, so seven, four. These are two six and nine. That's a two, that's a six, that's a nine. Get rid of the two from these squares. Look along here, we need four and eight. We can do that. Four and eight go in. That squares a five. These squares are two. Ah, we need the four here. This is a two five pair. That will do. We can do that. That becomes an eight. Looking up here, we need four and something. Nine. Oh, we can do that as well. And I think we might be about to hone in on a solution. Two, seven, and nine. Oh. Um, 
Okay, that doesn't seem to be resolved. I'll put the options in and tidy them up. Oh, gosh, how do I not see that? I do not know. Two, seven, and nine are resolved. That becomes a seven. This is six and eight. So two, five, six, and eight into those squares. This two, six is rather nice. Look. Eight, five, seven, eight, six. Click, tick. And that's how to solve the latest in Richard Stolk's incredible series. Just, it's just a beautifully fun puzzle, isn't it? Lots of elegant logic. I loved the snake stuff at the start, where we sort of had to pack our snake in. And then I li I really liked, um, what was it up here? I think it was this 22. And noticing that how this 15 clue worked with this cell here, having the one and two option. And that was, that was really crucial because once we knew the snake turned here, everything seemed to fall into place, especially that 20 clue. So yeah, it's what you expect from Richard. I mean, he, he is just this consistent, absolutely top quality puzzles time after time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do read them. Oh, and I'll look out for anyone who manages to uh, provide an elegant way of, you know, proving the start without doing it the way I did it. Um, I do think my way was fine, but you might you might disagree, in which case I look forward to reading your comment. Thanks for watching. Back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.